الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأني فضلتكم على العالمين واتقوا يوما لا تجزي نفس عن نفس شيئا ولا يقبل منها شفاعة ولا يوخذ منها عدل ولا هم ينصرون صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم واجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى ورحمة اللهم ذكرنا منهما نسينا وعلمنا منهما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته آنا الليل وآنا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In this hour, inshallah, we shall read four sections of Surah Al-Baqarah. Sixth, seventh, eighth and ninth. Here you see that again, the address, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati alamtu alaykum. Why this repetition? I told you in the previous session that the first section of this continuous address, it is a dawa, a call, a persuasion. The style of persuasion and dawa is different. And the style of blaming someone, charge shooting him, actually that style is different. So these are two different styles. The seven ayat of the previous section actually, they are for Dawa, for inviting them to accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to believe in him in Quran and be his companions, his helpers, and to fulfill the covenant that they made through Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wa salam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will be described in detail in Surah Al-Araf in ayah number 157. But from here actually starts a long charge sheet against the wrong doings and evil deeds of Bani Israel throughout their history. So essentially there are several incidents mentioned in these ayat and they have been mentioned here very briefly because some of them have been described in detail in the Madanis, in the Bakki surahs. In Surah Al-Araf for example, many things have been discussed in detail. In Surah Al-Qasas, many things have been given in detail. So here there are references. So we shall not be able to go into detail because we have to complete this recitation of four, four sections of this, this Surah now. Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, O progeny of Yaqub alayhi salatu wa salam, uskuru ni'mati allati alamtu alaykum, remember the blessings that I gave on you, I bestowed upon you, the favors that I did to you. And I preferred you. I raised you over all the nations of the world. There is a very big testimony being given here to the Jews that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at one time in history, He chose them out of all the peoples, all the men on earth. And he gave them the position of their, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's representative on earth. That was the highest position given to them. Anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen. Now there is a warning. 
and be fearful and be mindful of the day la tajri nafsun an nafsin shay'a when nobody will be able to avail anybody else's help wala yuqbalu minha shafa nor an intercession would be accepted from anybody wala yukhadu minha adlun nor any compensation will be accepted from anybody wala hum yunsarun nor they will be helped from any quarter now this is a very profound ayah the day of judgment and allah subhanahu wa taala has given four things about it no intercessions will be useful beneficial nobody will be able to help anybody else nobody will be able to present some compensations and nobody will be accepted in place of somebody else you won't be able to relieve your own sons or daughters you no won't be able to relieve your parents your father or mother everybody would have to face his own accountability his own deeds laysa lil insan illa ma sa wa nasa yahu safa yura and for every human being there is nothing except for which he himself worked and and you know he, he himself took the labor of doing something only the reward will be of those things but whatever he did he will find it he will see it before him now comes starts that charge sheet long charge sheet why is that jaina ko min al firaun and just remember when we delivered you from the people of firaun yasumu lakum su al azab they were afflicting you with the worst torment yuzabbihuna abnaakum wa yastahiyuna nisaakum they were killing your sons and keeping your women alive wa fi zalikum balaa'un min rabbikum azim and in that definitely verily there was a big testing and trial from your lord such persecutions you were meeting at the hands of the people of firaun in egypt and we delivered you from there wa isfaraqna bikum al bahra and how did we deliver you from them when we separated the sea when we split the sea water fan jainakum and we delivered you wagraqna ala firaun and we drowned the people and the army of firaun wantum tadrun and you were seeing for your yourself you were there you were seeing them drowning before your own eyes wa is wa'adna musa 40 laylatan and when we called moses alayhi salatu wassalam for 40 nights definite nights summa takhassumul ijla but in his absence you took to the worship of cow mim ba'dihi wa antum zalimun and you were the evil doers you became mushriks you were worshiping cow in the calf summa afauna ankum mim ba'di zalik after that even after that we pardoned you forgave you laal lakum tashkurun so that you should be grateful and thankful to us why is aata na musal kitab and just remember and recall when we gave moses the book the torah and actually he was called to to tour for the same purpose for 40 days as i told you he kept fast for 40 days and then he was able to receive the book of allah subhanahu wa taala and that is the similarity this we will be fasting inshallah during the day and we shall be gathering here to receive some part of the book of allah subhanahu wa taala may allah subhanahu wa taala make us able to receive this divine knowledge from our hearts as well as our minds why is atana musal kitab wal furqan and remember when we gave moses the book and the thing with which difference can be made between falsehood and right and wrong laal lakum tahtadun so that you take to the right path you avail of the guidance wa is qala musa li qaumihi and remember when moses said to his people ya qaum innakum zalamtum anfusakum o my nation o my people you have wronged yourselves bi ittikhadikum al ijla by taking to the worship of calf fatubu ila barikum so we so repent and return to your lord faqtulu anfusakum and kill yourself what does it mean those of you 
who didn't take to the worship of calf should kill and assassinate those who worship the calf this is the punishment of shirk and irtidad in islam and this is the old law law of the book of torah and as the tradition goes the bible the old testament says 70000 of them were killed the total number was 600000 who left egypt with hazrat musa alaihi salatu wassalam 600000 70000 out of them they took to the worship of this calf and now from each tribe those people who became kafirs but were worshiping calf is definitely kufr they became murtad they had to be killed murder kill killing is the the punishment of itraz in islam so actually this is a very important example faqtulu anfusakum zalikum anfusakum people of the same tribe they are one actually when they were assassinating or killing their own brothers it was as if they were killing themselves faqtulu anfusakum zalikum khairul lakum inda barikum this is better for you near your lord although it appears to be very cruel although it appears to be something very bad killing so many people but if it is there is good in it there is the final benefit in it zalikum khairul lakum inda barikum fataba alaykum and then he accepted your tauba he accepted your repentance innahu huwa tawwabur rahim verily he very much accepts tauba and he is very much merciful wa is qultum ya musa lan nu'mina laka hatta nara allah jahratan and just remember now you see that in at each ayah there is an incident and in very brief words it has been described we can't go into detail wa is qultum ya musa lan nu'mina laka hatta nara allah jahratan fa akhiratkum as-sa'iqatu wa antum tanzurun and just recall when you demanded from moses we will never accept you we will never believe in you unless we see allah with our own eyes ayanan when we see allah with our own eyes clearly and plainly only then we shall believe in you that actually this torah has been given to you by allah subhanahu wa taala fa akhadat kum as-sa'iqatu on this wrong demand of yours a thunderbolt struck you want to tanzurun and you are seeing it in within your eyes and within your sight when you demanded when you placed this demand before moses alayhi salatu wassalam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala struck you with a thunderbolt and you were all dead summa basakum basnakum min ba'd mawtikum la'allakum tashkurun but then we raised you again we raised you alive again after your death you had died all of you but we then we brought all of you to life la'allakum tashkurun so that you may be thankful and grateful wazallana alaykum al-ghamam when they were in the sinai desert you know when they came out from egypt they were in the sinai peninsula and because this gaza strip was inhabited and there was fear that they will be arrested if they they cross this sinai peninsula from the northern coast so though they went down you know along this uh, what is that called gulf of suez and then again the gulf of aqaba then they came up, came up so then that was a long journey in the desert there was nothing to eat and 600000 people 6 lakhs of people and they, they needed something to eat something to drink no water no no food no shelter so allah subhanahu wa taala and you see here allah subhanahu wa taala is showing them miracle after miracle their escape from egypt was a miracle the sea broke into two pieces it was split and there was a way for them to cross the river then when pharaoh and his armies came the two sides of the water met each other and they were drowned so it was a miracle big miracle now three miracles are mentioned here wazallana alaykum alghamam and we caused the clouds to overshadow you wherever this caravan of 600 people was moving a continuous cloud was going along with them so that they are saved from the heat of the sun zallallahu alaykumul ghamam we gave you the shadow of cloud 
and we sent down for you the man and salva. Man was some sweet grains, and salva was some birds which came in thousands, and they easily caught them. So they got their proteins from salva and their carbohydrates from man. So all the requirements, dietary requirements, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled for them by a miracle. Man and salva. Eat from the pure things which we have given you. And they didn't do any wrong to us. They couldn't do any wrong to us. They were doing wrong to themselves. When somebody is not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is doing no harm to Allah. He is doing all harm to himself. How can anybody harm, do any harm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He is above all these things. So anybody who is disobeying him is doing harm to himself. And just recall, when we said to you, enter this, this city or this town, Hadhil Qariya. Now which was that city or town? Here again, Quran doesn't mention the name. Hadhi, this, enter this town. But you know, the biblical description tells it, it was the town of Jericho or Ariha. That was the first town that was captured by the Bani Israel after their exodus from Egypt. And that was the beginning of their conquering Palestine. So the first town that fell to them was Ariha or Jericho. It's very important today. In the news you find this name, you know, repeatedly. Enter this town and eat bountifully therein with pleasure and delight wherever you wish. What khulul baba sujjadan. But enter the door bowing your heads. That was very important. When a conqueror enters a town which he has conquered, or an army enters a town which he has conquered, then you know the, the next. They are high up, the heads are high, they are proud. But when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa entered Mecca, he, his head was bowed down. His forehead was touching the hair of the, the neck of the horse he was riding. Because this was not the time of arrogance, it was the time of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same commandment was given to them. Utkhulul baba sujjadan, bowing yourself. Wakulu hittatun. And repeat the word hitta. Hitta means meant in, in Hebrew. Hitta, O oh Allah, ikhfir lana. Pardon us. Grant us our mistakes. Hittatun. And going with your humility and say, forgive us. Nakfir lakum khatayakum. We shall forgive you your misdeeds or your mistakes. And those of you who are good doers, we will, we will increase their rewards. But those evil doers, those who were the evil doers, they changed the word that was given to them by another one which was not given to them. And it is given in, in Torah, they said, hinta, hinta. Instead of hitta, hinta. Hinta means this wheat. We need wheat. We need wheat. This was the bad habit of these Jews from the very beginning. As we shall find that with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to say, Raina, Raina. So this, this will, inshallah, we shall read when we go progress further. فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَالُ الْغَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنْدَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِزَّ مِنَ السَّبَاعَ So we send down upon those evildoers a punishment from the sky. بِمَا كَانُوا يَبْسُقُونَ because of their rebellion nature, rebellion and disobedience. Why is this Musa Again, remember the time when the nation of Moses, people of Moses, asked for water. Istaska Musa Istaska to demand water to drink because there was no source of water. And for such a big, you know, perhaps there was some camping at some place. And at that place there was no source of water. And now 600,000 people going without water. 
what condition would have been there, it's, everybody can imagine. Now they gather around Moses alayhi salatu wa salam. You find these, all these details in Torah, in very lengthy details. They cursed Moses alayhi salatu wa salam. They said, you have done us something very bad. At least we were there in Egypt. Although we were slaves, but we were eating and drinking and we were having all the goods of life. Now, although we have become free from that bond of slavery, but nothing to eat, not even water to drink. Where have you brought us? That was the attitude of the people. Now, when they gathered round Hazrat Musa wasalam, demanding water, Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu wasalam prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, produce some source of water for us. Fakulna, we told him, we asked him, Idrib bi asak al hajar, strike this rock with your staff. Fan fajarat min husnata ashrat aayna. There gushed forth from that rock twelve springs. Qad alima kullu nasim mashrabahu. Every tribe knew its place of drinking because there were twelve tribes. They were the progeny of twelve sons of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. And there were twelve tribes. Now look to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't give them one, one spring. They would have fought each other. So twelve springs gushed out. So every tribe fixed for itself that this is our spring and this is our spring. So that there was no infighting between them on this water. قَدْ عَلِمَ كُلُّهُ نَاسٍ مَشْرَبَهُمْ كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا بِالْنِسْتِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْصَوْا فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ And as if it was said to them, now eat and drink from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you. And don't, do not act corruptly, making mischief on the earth. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نَسْمِرَ عَلَىٰ تَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them man and salwa. All the dietary needs were fulfilled by these two. They were getting them without any hard labor, without cultivation, without farming, everything easily at hand. But now they got tired with these two things. By skultum, and remember when you said, Ya Musa, O Moses, Lan nasmira ala ta'amin wahidin. We can't be patient with this only one food. Continue, continuously taking one food, this man and salva, nothing else. Fado lana rabbaka. So pray, pray to your Lord for us. Yukhri lana mimma tummitul ard. He should bring about, bring out from the earth what the, the earth grows. Mim bakleha wa kissaiha wa fumeha wa adaseha wa basaleha. Its herbs, its cucumbers, its garlic, its lentils and its onions. Now these are the things which aid taste, you know, to your food. So no, because they were very much accustomed to the taste of these foods, now they demanded these things because all their dietary requirements were being fulfilled. So now additionally, uh, every man needs some, something which is tasty. <laughs> Moses said, do you want to exchange that thing which is better with, with that which is worse? Adna or inferior at least. The meaning is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a better food. And you are asking for something which is inferior. Although there are tastes in it. But actually that food which is nourishing, which is natural. That is much better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You want to get in exchange something which is inferior. And you want to lose that thing which is superior. Ehbetu misra. Now this word ehbetu not. This hubut is not from sky to the earth. The same word. Ehbetu misran. Go and settle in some city. And now if you want these things, you will have to cultivate the earth. You will have to grow these things. All these things, you know, you can't get automatically. You have to settle down. This life of Bedouin and this life of traveling. Now you will have to give it up. If you want these things, and then you will get what you are demanding. This ayah is very important. And 
humiliation was heaped upon them. This is what to say conclusion. Due to the, these misdeeds of yours, due to these misdoings of yours, due to this going astray of yours, you were punished. The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to you by this decree. Humiliation was heaped upon them. And they drew the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Misery. Maskara misery. And they drew on themselves the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zalika bi annahum kanu yakfuruna bi ayatillah. And this is because they used to belie and deny the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَقْتُلُونَ النَّبِيِّينَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ And they had been killing and slaying the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any reason, without any cause. ذَلِكَ بِمَا عَصَوْ وَكَانُوا يَعْتَدُونَ And this punishment was given to them because they disobeyed and they were transgressing the bounds of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّسَارَ وَالصَّابِئِينَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ إِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْسَنُونَ Verily all those who believed, that is, who became Muslims, who believed in Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا and those who became Jews, وَالنَّسَارَ and the Christians, وَالصَّابِئِينَ and the Sabis, this was a different nation and most people think they were in Iraq and they thought they were following Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Some say they were the people of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. They were following the Sharia of Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam. Wallahu alam. Nothing is known for sure. The real thing is, Man amana billahi wal yawmil akhire wa amila salihan. Whosoever believes in Allah, has real faith in Allah and the day of judgment, the last day. And then he does or he did good deeds. For their reward is now with their Rabb, with their master. It is assured. Their reward is assured with their master, with their Rabb. And there shall be no fear upon them and nor shall they be, they be grieved. Now this ayah is a very controversial ayah of the Quran. Some people have inferred from this ayah that having faith in Muhammad wasallam is not essential for salvation. Because here also you note that Iman bil Akhirah and Iman Billah, only two basic articles of Iman have been mentioned. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّسَارَ وَالصَّابِينَ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلَهُمْ عَجْرُهُمْ إِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَعْسَلُونَ But actually it's a big mistake to argue in that way. Because here you refer to the section number 6 of this very surah. This whole discussion starts with an invitation to the Jews to believe in Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So it is as if you know in arithmetic, you know, there is some sub which is outside the brackets. And it is multiplied by all the quantities that are within the brackets. Here actually, this whole discussion is governed. It will be at every moment, at every place, it will be multiplied by the contents of those seven ayat which came in the beginning. That is why, you know, there is a very close similarity between this this bracket, the word I am using, because the two ayat which, with which this discussion has now started, Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen wa attaqu yawman la tajdi nafsun an nafsin shayya wa la yuqbalu bina shafa'atun wa la yuqadu bina adun wa la yuqadu bina adun the same two ayat will come in the beginning of section 15 Ya Bani Israel, askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa anni faddaltukum ala al-alameen the same two ayat what does it mean? The bracket starts with these two ayat and brackets end with those two ayat. And before this bracket are the seven ayat of section six. 
and you know the main theme of that section is wa aminu bima anzaltu musaddiqan lima ma'akum wa la takunu awwala kafirin bi wa la tashtaru bi ayati samanan qalilan wa iyaya fattaqun ya bani israil askuru ni'mati allati anamtu alaykum wa awfu bi ahdi yufi bi ahdikum wa iyaya farhamun so basic subject is the call to the jews to believe in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the quran now that common factor has been taken out outside the the bracket it is not being repeated everywhere now but it is governing the whole passage the whole address you know that is commanding and that is governing the whole passage and that is actually the meaning now if we gaze our eyes and fix our gaze on this eyes what does it mean it means that at, at the time of every ummah there was a time when muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not born up till that time the ummah was nasara whosoever christian at that time believed in allah and the akhirah and good and did good deeds well his reward is assured with allah subhanahu wa taala is safe he will get the reward before hazrat e masih alaihi salatu wassalam it was the days of the prophet who the messenger wrote of hazrat e musa alaihi salatu wassalam any jew who actually believed in allah and you have akhara and he was going to deed when his reward is also sure so actually this pertains to the periods of every ummah that from every ummah only belonging to an ummah is not decisive in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala because you are a jew even in the days before hazrat masih alaihi salam if there was a jew if he was not doing good deeds he if he didn't have real belief in allah well his deeds were meaningless in the eyes of allah subhanahu wa taala and he had no position even for the muslims today if you only profess to believe in muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the era of muhammad now after the advent of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam everybody has to believe in him but only believing in him doesn't mean anything unless we really believe in allah unless we really believe in the day of judgment unless we really believe in the hereafter unless our good deeds are there and they are just you know rationally proportional to our beliefs and our professions then actually unless these things are there being a muslim being counted a muslim in this world doesn't mean anything on the day of judgment so this is the essence of this ayah inna allazina amanu wal ladina hadu wal nasara was sabi man amana billahi wal yawmil akhir wa amila salihan falahum ajruhum inda rabbihim wala khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun وَإِذَا خَلَقْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الطُّورَ and remember when we took the covenant from you and we raised raised the mount over you over your heads فَوْقَكُمُ الطُّورَ فَخُذُوا مَا آتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةٍ again it's a miracle when the Torah was given to Moses عليه الصلاة والسلام when he came to his people again then he saw that people had started worshiping calf then as we have read the punishment was then and that punishment was carried out then again hazrat moses took alai salatu wassalam with him 70 people they went again to the tour and there they repented before allah subhanahu wa taala and now they made a firm covenant with allah subhanahu wa taala now to have that covenant very serious allah subhanahu wa taala raised the mountain over their heads these miracles were happening then at that time but you know from the time of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam now the miracle is only this quran is the intellectual miracle and not a miracle seen by these eyes or by these heard by these ears not sensual miracle but actually now the miracles are intellectual miracle and that is quran but before that that was you we may say that was the infancy of mankind and so these miracles were shown to them but but with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this ummah not such miracle but you have to understand and you have to follow and you have to act and you have to act through accepting all the hardships of this world and then you have to fulfill your duties wa idha khadna misaqakum wa rafa'na fawqakum at-tur khudhu ma atainakum bi quwwatin hold fast to what we have given to you was quru ma fihi and remember whatever is there in it and that is means tawra la'allakum tattaqun so that you are saved from the wrath of allah subhanahu wa taala you are saved from his displeasure you are saved from the day of, from his punishment on the day of judgment 
summa tawallat min ba'd zalik but then you turned away after this after making that covenant well your deeds and actions were to the contrary falawla fadlullah alaykum wa rahmatuhu had there been no grace and mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over you lakuntum min al-khasirin you would have been among the losers long ago long before wa laqad alimtum alladhina tadaw minkum fi as-sab and you know very well those of you from you who transgressed the matter the law of sabbat now this was a very hard law in the sharia and that was that this saturday this yawm sabbat actually to them also this friday was given by allah subhanahu wa taala but they themselves preferred from friday and they chose saturday allah subhanahu wa taala decided it for them well this is the sacred day for you you can't do any work any worldly work any work of earning anything this whole day is reserved for remembering allah for reading torah for zikr for salah for prayers and so on no work can be done but you know there was a tribe of theirs which was on the on the shore sea shore at aqaba this is a famous place now that that tribe you know that lived at aqaba and catching fish was their profession so allah subhanahu wa taala tested them the details will come inshallah in surah al araf so here we don't have time to go into detail but they transgressed the law of sabbat and you know very much very well those of you amongst you who transgressed the, the law of sabbat we said to them kunu qiradatan khasin as a punishment we said to them be monkeys be you monkeys despised and rejected fajalna nakalan lima baina yadaiha and we made this punishment an example for the people who were present before them and people who came after them people who were their contemporaries they knew that this nation this tribe of ours has been given this worst punishment in the us so that they became an example an exemplary punishment was given so we made them an example for people who were with them present at that time and people who were coming after them fa mawizatan lil muttaqin and it became a lesson and a sermon for people who have any fear of god wa is qala musa li qaumihi inna allaha ya'murukum an tasbahu baqara another incident a very interesting incident indeed and remember when moses said to his nation to his people inna allaha ya'murukum verily allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demands from you an tasbahu baqara that you sacrifice a, a cow qalu atatakhiduna huduwa they said do you make fun of us because there was the germs you know that they thought that cow is sacred now they were being tested on that account so they wanted to just somehow get away from this so they said do you want to make mock make fun of us atatakhiduna huduwa qala a'udhu billahi an akuna min al-jahilin musa said alayhi salatu wassalam i take refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from becoming among the jahilin from those people who are ignorant and foolish that you don't expect this that i can make fun of you i am the messenger of allah i am his prophet you know it very well you believe in me and then you are saying that i am making fun of you qalu do lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma hi they said call your your lord he should explain for us what type of a cow he wants what type of a cow he wants that should be sacrificed قال انه يقول انها بقره لا فارض ولا بكر موسى said that allah subhanahu wa taala says it should be a cow which is neither too old nor too young awan un bain zalik between the two in between someone in between neither too old nor too young fafalu ma tumaru now do what has been commanded to you to do qalu do lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma launuha they again said again call your rabb your lord he should explain to us what should be the color of the cow that we should sacrifice qala innahu yaqul moses said allah says indaha baqaratun safra that should be a cow which is yellow colored faqiul launuha bright in in its color launuha tasurrun nadirin pleasing to the beholders whosoever sees 
he is pleased to see it very shining yellow color qalu do lana rabbaka yubayyin lana ma hi again they said call your rabb call your allah he should explain to us make it clear for us what is that cow that he wants in sacrifice in bil bakara tashaba alaina these cows you know they are all alike to us or we have become confused about the cow which type of cow or which cow allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to sacrifice wa inna inshallah la muhtadun and we shall be inshallah we shall be on guided and we shall be on guidance when the things become clear we don't want to shirk it we shall do it but please make everything more clear qala innahu yaqulu innaha baqaratun la zalulun tusiru al-ard he said moses said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it is a cow that is not trained to till the soil la zalulun tusiru al-ard tilling and cultivating the soil wala tasqil haras not it waters the land the fields from the wells you know fetching water musallabatun it should be of one color throughout plashiya tafiya there should be no dot of any other color qalu al aan jaita bil haq now there was no other option no other question more to ask and then he they had to say al aan jaita bil haq now you have made everything clear and you have told us the true thing wama qalu ya falu they were not ready to do it but they did it after her, after all they had to do it why is qatal tum nafsan fadaratun fiha and when you killed a person from amongst you fadaratun fiha and then they started dispute over blaming each other as to who killed him wallahu mukhrijum ma kuntum taktubun and allah was to clear out and bring about what you were concealing what you were hiding qullan ribuhu bi ba'dha we said strike this dead body of this person with some part of the body of that cow which was sacrificed kazalika yuhyi allah al mauta now what happened when they touched that dead body of the person who was slain who was killed who was murdered with some part of the body of the cow that was sacrificed he became alive and he told the name of the killer the murderer who had murdered him and then he again died So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala showed them this sign. Kaf kazaale ka yuhi Allahu al-bauta. In the same way, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will bring to life all the people who are dead. People who are dead, they will be brought to life. Just as this person who was murdered, who was killed, who was dead before your eyes, and he became alive, and he told the name of the murderer, the killer, and then he again was dead. Wa yuri ko maayate hi, and he shows you his signs. La alakum taqilud. so that you understand and you ponder upon them summa qasat qulubukum min ba'd zalik then after all this your hearts hardened hardening of the heart fahi akal hijara and now they are like stones aw ashadd qaswa or harder more hard than stones even summa qasat qulubukum is very important aya we must focus our attention if this thing happened to bani israel this can happen to us and it has happened to us the same hardening of the heart the same hypocrisy the same wishful thinking all those things which cropped up in the former bani umma they cropped up in the in the present muslim umma also summa qasat qulubukum min ba'd zalik and then after this after all this your hearts hardened fayakal hijarat wa shadd qaswa now they are like stones in hard hardness or more than them wa inna min al hijarat la ma yatafajjaru minhu al anhar because there are rocks there are stones from between which the springs gush out there are springs gushing out of the stones wa inna minha la ma yashaqqaqu and among these stones and rocks are those which split fa yakhruju minhu al ma and water comes out of it wa inna minha la ma yahbitu min khashiyatillah and among the stones and rocks are those who fall due to the fear of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa wallahu bighafilin amma ta'malun 
and the law is not ignorant of what you are doing. Your deeds, your actions, they are all in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now as a brief pause, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing apparently the Muslims. But here again, actually the, the people who are being discussed are the Jews. But this ayah is addressing Muslims. Afatatmauna yuminulakum. O Muslims, do you hope or wish that these people should believe in you? Should believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do you hope? You have any expectations? You wish it? You covet it? Afatatmauna yuminulakum. Waqad kana fariqum minhum. When a if some people among them have been so much courageous against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَقَدْ كَانَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ That they were hearing the kalam of Allah. سُمَّ يُحَرْوِفُونَهُ And then they have been changing it, corrupting it. مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا قَلُوهُ After having understood it, not by mistake, but by willful wrongdoing. They have been changing the words of Allah, the kalam of Allah. So people who dare changing the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do you hope that they will come to the right path and they will believe in you and in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? أَفَتَتْ مَعُونَ أَيُّوَ مِنُوا لَكُمْ وَقَدْ كَانَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ سُمَّ يُحَرِّفُونَهُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا قَلُوهُ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they were doing all these things knowingly, with intention. وَإِذَا لَقُلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا And when they meet the people of faith, the Mormons, they say, we are also Mormons. I have discussed it in the section number two of this very surah. وَإِذَا لَقُلْ لَذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا And here you see, they are definitely the Jews about which these words are, appear, are appearing here. There I told you, that both the Jews as well as the Munafiqun, they were there in the background of the, sec of the second section of the surah. Here they are definitely the Jews. وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَا بَعْضُمْ إِلَا بَعْضٍ And when they are privately meeting e with each other, two Jews, قَالُوا وَتُحَدِّسُونَهُمْ They say to each other, Are you telling them, that is the Muslims, بِمَا فَتَحَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has disclosed on you, those things which have appeared in Torah, in support of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do you want to tell the Muslims those things? So that they can argue against you on the day of judgment, uh, with, before your Lord, before your Rabb. So do you not understand? Don't you have any any understanding? What are you doing? Now please understand. There were some moments that a Jew, in some good moment, he used to say to the Muslims, yes, about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, such and such, you know, there are these prophecies and these things we have, we, we find them in Torah. But now they blamed each other when they met each other. What are you doing? You are telling them these things? which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told you, has opened upon you, so that they will now argue against you on the day of judgment. Oh Allah, they accepted, and they had recognized Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said to me, that in Torah we find all the qualities, and all the prophecies regarding Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they were blaming each other. Why do you tell them, that in Torah there are the prophecies, which support the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أَوَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسْرُونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Do they don't know that Allah knows whatever they are hiding or whatever they are revealing? Even if they don't tell the Muslims, Allah knows it, that all the prophecies in Torah were present about the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All the signs were present. So Allah will argue against you himself. أَوَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسْرُونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ even if the Muslims don't know, even if they don't disclose all these things to the Muslims, after all, Allah knows them. وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا أَمَانِيَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَغُنُّونَ From among them there are ummis also. Now what are these ummis? 
the illiterate people among the Jews. Because all Jews were not ulama. All Jews didn't read Torah, just as we don't read Quran. We go and ask the Masala for a Balmi Sahab, that's all. And we read Quran only to get Sahab. And that is also a very small percentage of the Muslims who read Quran now. Gone are the days when the majority of the Muslims used to recite Quran every morning. Gone. Long ago. Finished. Very few percentage of the Muslims recite Quran regularly. And among them also, how many people understand it? So actually the same was the case of the Jews. We have at least the whole Quran with us in best bound form and on best paper and printed everything. Do you know about 2000 years before, there was no such facilities available. So actually very few people among the Jews knew Torah and what was there in Torah. So that is what is Quran saying here. Minhum ummiyun, la ya'lamun al-kitab. Among them are those unlettered people, uneducated people, illiterate people who don't know the book. They say they believe in Torah, but they don't know what is Torah. Illa amaniya. What they know are their wishful thinking. We are the chosen people of the Lord. We are the progeny of Yaqub and Ibrahim and Ishaq. We will be we will be definitely saved from the fire of hell because we are very dear to Allah, like sons. We are very dear. And even if fire touches us, it will touch us only for a few days, number of days. We shall not remain in the hell forever. All these are amani. These are their wishful thinking. They have themselves, you know, created these things out of nothing. This is a fiction. This is not something from Torah. But min hum ummiyun la yalamun al kitab illa amaniya. And if you try to just assess the position of the Muslims also, the same is the condition of the Muslims. We also have the same amani. We are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Jo kuch bhi hai, lekin tere mahboob ki ummat mein hai. Because we are, we belong to the ummah of your mahboob sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So our, you know, uh, our destiny is fixed. Our positions in Jannah are reserved. Our seats are reserved over there. Our salvation is ensured. So that is actually the wishful thing. وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا أَمَانِي يَبَيْنُهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِعَيْدِهِمْ Now the other people, they were the Jews, ulama, the, the, the rabbis of the, the Jews. What did they do? They wrote the book with their own hands, changed the wordings of the book, then they sold their fatwas, just as you know some of the Balmis today sell the fatwas. They get prices by selling fatwas. Just as a person, you know, wishes to get a fatwa, he can get a fatwa, he can he can purchase a fatwa. There are those ulama who, not all of them, but there are some people. So that that was the the, the character of the, the ulama. Woe to the people who write the book with their own hands. And then they say, this is from Allah. So that they can get very little price. Very little price, you know, for that. Because the biggest price that they can get is actually a little price. If you compare it to the, to the salvation in the hereafter. What will you get? Thousands or lakhs of rupees or dollars, nothing else. But you know, what are you losing? The salvation of the hereafter. The eternal life of Jannah, that is you are lo- losing. And you are getting this price. Woe to them due to what their, the, their hands wrote. And woe to them for the, for the earnings that they have made through this business and trading of religion. Again, the same example of their wishful thinking. And they said, Nar, fire of hell cannot touch us except for a few days, few numbered days. Some said seven days, some said nine days, some of them said forty days, not more than that. 
the fire of hell cannot touch us except for a few number days qul atakhastum in the lahi ahadan ask them o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have you got some covenant from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falan yukhlif allah ahadahu and you hope and you are sure that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not do against his covenant where is that covenant am taquluna ala allah ma la ta'lamun or in the alternative are you saying about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you don't know without any knowledge without any basis basis you are saying these things and ascribe these things to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bala now this is the final word of this section and these are the eternal laws of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bala why not man kasaba sayyatan whosoever willfully earns even one ill doing one bad deed sayyatan sayyatan one deed one bad deed one bad act one sin but it should be a big sin kabira wa ahatat bihi khatiyatuhu and then the the sin you know is surrounds his whole personality even one sin can surround the whole personality of that evil doer faula ka ashabun nar hum fiha khalidun they are the people of fire and they will remain in that forever forever khulud fil nar On the contrary, this is the usual case in Quran. Whenever there is a mention of hell and the people of hell, simultaneously, as a simultaneous contrast, people of heaven, people of Jannah, they are also mentioned as a contrast. As for those who believed in Allah, who believed, who had the faith, real faith, real iman, who had the faith, real iman. and the proof of real faith is amal salih that the deeds should be good character should be good his behavior should be good good should come out from his person it should spread from his person into his society ulai ka sabul jannah they are the people of jannah they are the people of heaven they are the people of paradise hum fiha khalidun and they will dwell in that forever and forever so that is the divine law everything is based on real iman and real amal saleh not on the basis of belonging to any any community you might belong to the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but if you don't have real iman and if your deeds are not good you are not performing your duties well you are just this connection you are belonging to the muslim ummah it carries no weight on the day of judgment in the balance of allah subhanahu wa taala بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعني وياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم